All right, um, so welcome back uh, to this ser series of video lectures for Math 1410, Linear Algebra. Uh, in the previous video, we introduced the concept of the s uh, of a subspace of, of Rn, so a collection of vectors within Rn that viewed as a whole behave like a subspace. So the idea with a subspace is, you know, you want to think of a subspace as sort of like this. So if, if, if U in Rn is a subspace... Uh, you want to think of this as sort of being like a, a, a copy of R, let's say, K inside of Rn, where K here is less than or equal to N. Right? So, like, if you have a line through the origin, uh, a line is like a copy of R. A plane is like a copy of R2, right? So subspaces are, are basically like copies of lower dimensional um, are ends sitting inside of a higher dimensional space, um, but you know they might be oriented at some funny angle. It's not necessarily, let's say, a coordinate axis or a coordinate plane. It could be any any line or plane that passes through the origin. Um, and the final example in the last video showed that one of the ways you can generate a subspace is by um, considering the set of all vectors that are are generated by a pair of vectors using addition and scalar multiplication. Um, this sort of operation, this is what's called a linear combination, and we'll see that um, in general, linear combinations are what allow you to generate subspaces. Okay, so what in what is kind of the proper definition of a linear combination? Um, a linear combination is really just any expression that can be written like this. So, so if we wanted to say that the vector v is a linear combination of the vectors v1 up to vk. Um, what we're saying here is that we can find scalars c1, c2 up to ck that satisfy this equation, right? So we would say, so the way you would read this is you would say v is a, a linear combination of these vectors v1 up to up to vk. So that's, that's the context in which you would discuss a linear combination. And of course, if you have a bunch of vectors, um, you can form a linear combination. So for example, let's say um, v1 looks like, say, 2 minus 1, 0, 3. Maybe v2 looks like 0, 2, 5 minus 4. v3 is equal to minus 1, 0, 1, 3. Right. So a linear combination could be something of the form, let's say, v is equal to um, 2v1 minus 3v2 um, plus 4v3, right? Um, so the 2 here, the 2 is, is like your c1, the, th the minus 3 is your c2, and the 4 is your is your c3 in this case um, and and of course you can you can simplify this expression so what does this work out to well um, 2 times v1 would be 4 minus 2 0 uh, 6 um, minus 3 times v2 would be 0 minus 6 minus 15 and 12 and uh, 4 times v3 I get minus 4 0, uh, 4, 12, and I can add those together. I would get uh, 0, minus 8, minus 11, and uh, 30. Right? So, so this is my vector v, right? This is v. v is this guy here, right? And what I've done is I've shown that this vector v, the vector 0, minus 8, minus 11, and 30, can be written in terms of the vectors v1, v2, v3. Um, now, going in this direction, of course, this direction is easy. If you're given the vectors and you're given the scalars, we know how to do scalar multiplication. We know how to do addition. Um, so it's not that hard to construct the vector v. Um, the more challenging problem is going in the other direction, working backwards. Um, if I give you the vectors, if I give you v, and I give you v1, v2, and v3, um, can you figure out these scalars, right? So if I give you the vectors, can I find, 
can I figure out what these values are, C1, C2, C3? Can I determine those values um, that satisfy this equation? That's a much harder problem. Uh, that leads us into the territory of solving systems of equations. And when we explore that in the next chapter, we'll find that, well, um, in some cases, the answer is that it just can't be done. There are no values. Um, and in some cases, you will find exactly one set of values that work. And in other cases, uh, you will find that there are, in fact, infinitely many possible um, choices of values that you could make for those scalars that works out. Um, so the reverse problem is much more difficult. Um, kind of, you know, reverse engineering this to recover the scalars. Um, this is this is sort of a, you know, a much more involved algebra problem, and it's something that we'll explore later on in the course. All right. Um, so once you understand what linear combinations are, you can sort of consider linear combinations in the abstract, and you can say, well, you know, what if I, instead of just considering one set of numbers to form a single linear combination, what if I consider all possible choices for those C's? I consider all possible choices for my scalars. I consider all possible linear combinations. Uh, this is what the span is. So, so the span, so the notation we'd use is this. So the span of the set of vectors, say V1 up to Vk, okay, would be equal to, so it would be the set of all vectors of the form c1 times v1 plus c2 times v2 and so on down to ck times vk right where c1 c2 ck these guys are real numbers right so it's it's all vectors so this this is some vector right this is my v so it's all possible vectors v that you can you can create by forming linear combinations of the vectors v1 v2 up to vk um, right and so this is this is what a span is and we've seen some examples of span we've seen that the span of a single vector looks like a line the span of two vectors looks like a plane um, we'll we'll keep these examples um, in mind as we as we go forward um, so you know if we were doing a, a quick example um, say we wanted this span of the vectors maybe uh, 2 0 minus 3 uh, 1 um, 0, 4. Um, so that would be the set of all things that would look like, say, um, S times 2, 0, minus 3, plus T times 1, 0, 4, where S and T are real numbers. So that would look like, you know, all vectors of the form 2S plus T, and then a 0 in the middle, and then minus 3s plus 4t, where s and t are real numbers. Right? Um, so with a set like this, if, you, if somebody handed you a vector and you wanted to figure out whether or not it had any chance of belonging to that span, um, well, there's one easy thing you would check in this case, right? Is, the, um, is that middle component of your vector is it equal to zero if it's not equal to zero there's no way that it could possibly be written as a linear combination of these two vectors because anything that's written as a linear combination of these two vectors ends up with that zero in the middle spot um, so but you know in, in many cases it's not quite so easy to tell if a given vector is in the span okay um, so here's another example um, here's a pair of vectors what does the span of u look like um, so the span of u. So here we're dealing with just a single vector, right? So that would be all things that simply look like, say, t times uh, u, where t is a real number, right? Um, so if you only have one vector, a linear combination involving a single vector is simply a scalar multiple of that vector, right? So so here you get all things that just look like um, 2t minus t and 4t, where t is a real number. And we know that what this would look like if we were trying to sort of plot it is, uh, so u would be a vector kind of, you know, 
maybe you would say like that. And the set of all scalar multiples of u would simply be a line passing through the origin in the direction of, uh, of, of u. So that's what the span of u would look like. Um, for the span of u and v, so then we're looking at all things that look like, let's say, s times u plus t times v, where s and t are real numbers. So this time we get things that look like uh, 2s minus t minus s plus 3t, uh, 4s plus t, where s and t are are real numbers. Um, so what I've done there, um, just to kind of, you know, let me fill in one more one more step there, right? Um, S times u, if I take the vector u and I multiply by the scalar s, I have uh, 2s minus s, 4s. Um, if I do t times v, I have minus t, 3t, and t. So s and t here are are real numbers. Um, one of the uh, one of the skills that you're going to need to develop going forward through some of this material is the ability to kind of um, go back and forth here. So, if I give you the two vectors u and v, um, you want to be able to write down a general linear combination like this is a single vector. In other cases, you might be given that vector. You're given the single vector like that, and you need to kind of reverse the steps here. Take this vector, which involves these two parameters s and t. Uh, split it up into a pair of vectors, one which only involves s, one which only involves t, and then as a final step, you know, factor with the s here, write it as s times uh, the vector u, and factor with the t from here, and write it as t times the vector v. Um, that, that's sort of a, a computation that you're going to find yourself doing frequently uh, moving forward. Okay. Uh, so in general, if I have a if I have a collection of vectors, I have a span of a bunch of vectors. Uh, I claim that this is a subspace, and the proof is actually it's the same as the argument we gave in the in the previous video. And so basically, um, I think we we maybe don't want to go through all the details, but let's kind of let's sort of sketch things out. How do we show it's a subspace? So remember, um, so if if v if v is an element of of v. Um, so that's equivalent to saying v looks like, say, um, a1 v1 plus a2 v2 down to a k v k uh, for some scalars a1, a2 up to uh, a k. And, and maybe I have a second vector w. Let's throw another um, vector w in there. So if, vec if w is in there, then we know that w can also be written as a linear combination, uh, but it's a different vector, so probably it's going to involve different scalars. So we'll call those ones b1 up to bk. Okay. Um, so one thing you might notice is that if I put uh, if I put um, a1 equals zero, a2 equals zero, if I put all of the a's equal to zero. Um, that would tell me that zero, the zero vector, belongs to v, right? So I know that the zero vector is in there. Remember, that's the first thing you generally check um, when you want to make sure that you've got a subspace. And, and now, if I take a general v and w, so the a's aren't necessarily zero anymore. Um, if I do v plus w, well, you can see what happens if I add them, right? I'm going to add the v1 terms. Uh, I'm going to get a v1 plus b v1, and I can factor with the v1 and just write that as a1 time plus v b1 all times v1, and then I do it for v2 all the way down to v k, and so I'm going to get something that looks looks like this: a1 plus b1 times v1 all the way down to a k plus b k times v k, um, and again, that's a, this is a linear combination of the v's because I've got my vectors v, and they're all multiplied by scalars. And if I were doing, say, uh, k times v for some scalar k, um, if I simplify that, I'm going to get, you know, k a1 v1 down to k a, I guess I shouldn't have used k, I've got a k here. Um, all right. What's a letter I haven't used? I haven't used c. Let's use c. Uh, c times v, c times a1 down to c times a k 
times VK. And again, that's of the desired form. And so, so this tells you that your, your set V, um, it contains a zero vector, so it's non-empty. It's closed under addition. It's closed under scalar multiplication. And, and so you know that it has to be a subspace. Okay, um, so let's end with one example. How do I show that this set is a subspace? If I can show that this set can be written as a span, then I know that it is a subspace. Um, so what we do here is we say, all right, so here's my solution. Um, if, um, if V is sort of any vector in V, then I know that I can write V as X, Y, and then 2X minus 3Y for some um, real numbers x and y. But that tells me that I could write v as, so I'm going to split it up like this. It's going to be x, I'm going to do x0 and then 2x plus 0y minus 3y. Right, so in the first vector I put everything that depends on x, in the second vector I put everything that depends on y, and now I can write this as x times 1, 0, 2. And I can write this as y times 0, 1, minus 3. And what that tells me is that v belongs to the span of the vectors 1, 0, 2, and 0, 1, minus 3, right? Um, and, and in fact, this is sort of an if and only if, right? So if, if V belongs to the span, then V um, is of the correct form. And if, if V belongs to this set, um, capital V, then definitely it belongs to that span. And, and so what we get is that um, this set here, this must, be, this must be equal to V, right? So... Um, so V is a span, and since V is a span, It must be a subspace. That's the argument we make here. Okay, um, so that's it for uh, for this video. In the next video, we're going to move on to a discussion of linear independence.